I have been married to my husband James for twenty years. We are not particularly wealthy family, but we have a nice house to live in, and have led a normal but peaceful and happy life. We were fortunate enough to have two children. Our son Tyler is currently studying at a nearby college. I told him he doesn't need to worry about the tuition, but he insisted on receiving a scholarship because he was studying for his own good. Our daughter Jen is in high school, and when I come home late from work, she voluntarily helps around the house, and I am very grateful to her. One day, I received some wonderful news from my husband. He says he has been promoted. He had been working so hard all these days, and it seems he is being transferred to a different department in addition to his promotion. How amazing! I am so happy for you. I have been watching him devoting himself to this job, so I am thrilled at the news. I am also excited that this may also mean a raise. To celebrate, the kids and I decide to prepare a special dinner. The next day, Jan and I cook everything that James loves, and Tyler brings home a cake that he bought with his own money earned from his part-time job. James is delighted, and he eats everything, saying it is all delicious. Once we have eaten all the food and are going through cake, James says something unbelievable. You know, I'm actually going out with a girl at work. Um, what? I ask, unable to understand what he just said. The children don't seem to understand either. James continues. She says she's pregnant. This is my house, so you all have to leave. I start to panic. Wait a moment. Do you even understand what you're saying? She's ten years younger than me, and she's really pretty. I am not interested in old women like you anymore. The children are staring at James, disgusted. Seeing them, he says. And you're adults now. You can manage by yourselves, right? Tyler is angry and shouts, "You must be kidding me! You can say that to me, but Jen is still in high school." He looks as though he could punch James at any second. A girl doesn't need education. There'll always be ways to earn money if she can sell herself. I feel as if everything is frozen for a moment. However, anger rises up from inside of me, and I hear myself yelling at my husband. What are you saying? How can you say that to your own daughter? I can't believe it. While I am shouting at him, I see Jen crying, and she runs to her own room. You are no father to me. I am leaving this house as you wish, but I'm never forgiving you for hurting Mom and Jen. Tyler then storms out, following Jen. James and I are left in the living room. A silence continues. After a while, James says, "Okay, so that's that. I'll be generous." And I'm letting you stay one more week before you get out of this house. All right, but I am taking custody of the children. I am having a new kid, so I have no use for them. You do as you wish. Okay then. Don't come complaining to me. Whatever happens, though. James answers without even looking at me. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? I got a promotion. I get to live a wealthy life. I have a young and pretty new wife, and I'm going to live happily ever after. 
This was supposed to be a night for the family to celebrate James' promotion, but it became the night that everything we had built up until now completely collapsed. The following day. I ask a friend who has been through a divorce to introduce me to a lawyer. With my friend's advice, I reach out to a private detective and ask them to investigate my husband. This also allows me to find out more about his lover. Apparently, she is a temporary worker at James's office. She does seem pretty, but I thought she had sort of calculated prettiness about her. I guess this is the kind of girl men tend to fall for. These are my thoughts as I listen to the report from the detective. Since then, I have rented a new apartment and moved in with my children. As I work full time and because I have some savings, it is all working out somehow. Jan seems to have calmed down now that we are away from James. And we are in a much better place than before. Once we have enough evidence, I talk to my lawyer and decide to have a discussion with my husband to talk about our divorce, with my lawyer attending as well. On the day of the discussion, I suggest to go to the house that we previously lived in and take my lawyer along. James snorts and says. There's no need for a lawyer. You are always so dramatic, you know. And laughs, but I try to stay calm and not react. However, inside my mind, I'm thrusting the table at my husband and beating him up with a chair. It seems his lover is already living in this house, and all the furniture and curtains that I chose have been replaced. Pink curtains with cute little flowers on them. She must have chosen them. Imagining her making these decisions, it makes me want to throw up. The lover, whose name I have learned as Heather, is there too, and she says, "This has nothing to do with me." And she seems angry. In my head, I think. It has everything to do with you. Do you want to get beaten up with this chair too? And I feel like I am about to explode. My lawyer tells James and Heather that we will be requesting a compensation, and when Heather hears this, she goes crazy. Why on earth do I have to pay? I thought girls don't need to pay. Um. So you're the one that's angry. I am the one who wants to be angry. It's shocking to think that someone with a mind like this actually exists in this world. My lawyer seems used to this kind of situation, and he continues calmly. Excuse me, but yes, you do have to pay a compensation to my client. You are the reason why this couple are getting a divorce. You do understand your own position, don't you? No, no. The reason is because this old woman wasn't attractive enough. I am so glad that my lawyer is here. If he wasn't, I would probably have beaten up this girl so hard. You are a very lucky little girl. While these thoughts are going through my mind, Heather picks up a cup which had coffee in it and throws it at me. Do something! You do know that I am carrying your little baby, don't you? Heather snuggles up to James as she says this. Excuse me, I can hit her now, right? Oh, please, can I hit her? I say to my lawyer. I've had enough, but my lawyer is cool and lends me a handkerchief. You want me to still stay calm? James has this horrible smile on his face with Heather snuggling up to him. 
I want to bury both of them. I take out the divorce papers that I had prepared. James signs them and says, "Good. We have nothing to do with each other anymore. I am paying you the compensation, so never come near us again." I sign the papers too, hand them to my lawyer, and ask him to submit them straight away. Once he is gone, James says, "You too, hurry up and go," and tries to get me to leave. However, I have been waiting all this time to ask her this one simple question: That baby, is it really my husband's child? You can tell that the atmosphere in the room has changed. Heather's eyebrows twitch ever so slightly, and it seems as if the gravity in this room has gotten heavier. What? What are you talking about? Of course, it's my child, right? Of course. How can you say something like that? I calmly place some documents onto the table. My husband wasn't the only one you were dating. I know you are spending a lot of money on a young aspiring musician. What are you talking about? You must be crazy. I feel much better now. I take a deep breath, and say slowly and calmly. I had a detective look into you too. It seemed odd why a young and pretty girl like you. Would want to come anywhere near an old man like James to begin with. The documents that I had placed on the table report what was going on around Heather. There are photos of her with the musician, going into a hotel with him, or being very intimate with him in the car. James looks at the report, turning red. What is this? He asks Heather. But she can only say, "No, it's not what it looks like," and can't seem to come up with a satisfactory explanation. James is furious with Heather, and he is screaming at her. "Were you lying to me, you whore? What? You should be happy that a pretty girl like me ever wanted to go out with you, and this is your child. You said you'd take responsibility." I can't believe anything you say. Seeing these two bickering in front of me, I am lost for words. It seems almost funny now to think that I was angry and upset by these terrible human beings. Well, it's none of my business who the father is. We are divorced now. James panics and says, "Wait." I don't mean any of it. What did you mean then? I reply, and he says, "It's just, I take back the divorce. Okay, okay. You just need to shut up." James has tears in his eyes, but I have nothing else to say to him. Goodbye. Wait. He is still begging me. And Heather is still screaming, but I leave the house. Later, I hear that Heather gave birth to a boy. That child, however, has dark skin, even though Heather and James are both white. She insisted right until the moment of birth that this was James's child. I hear they both went crazy when they saw the baby. It seems. Heather was not only going out with James and the musician, also white, but many other men as well, including an African American man. We can only assume that this man was the child's father. Soon after this, James kicks Heather out of his house, and I hear that she returned to her parents' house. The compensation from Heather is paid to me by her parents. And I receive a word of apology through my lawyer. 
James has no place at the office anymore, and it seems he could not stand all the whispering about him any longer and quit. It's such a shame. He had just received a promotion. Well, he only has himself to blame, and I am just so concerned for the baby's future. I don't pity Heather at all, but I am just worried about the baby. James can't seem to find a new job, and he's paying me the compensation while working several part-time jobs day and night. I am living a happy life with my children. My son Tyler still says he wants to beat his father up, but each time he says this, I tell him that James is not worth it, and that would not be good for Tyler himself. He listens to me. My daughter Jen has recovered from the shock, and she is enjoying high school very much. I don't mind if my two children make some mistakes in life, but I hope. They will grow up to be sincere and honest people.